Hello again. This is Pastor Deborah. Welcome to another word of encouragement video for you. That's right. I'm coming to you again each week to give you words of hope to help you look and assess and evaluate yourself. And if you can do that, then you'll be able to see clearer yourself and others. This is going to be a word of encouragement. Once again, coming out of Agape Love, Love is Here's Zoom Studios with a motion video from Pixabay. I want you to bless Pixabay. Use it, donate to the creators of the videos. There are many you can download for free. Pastor Deborah does that to help you to visualize and see into the realm of the spirit. The realm where most of you may not even believe exist or that you live in it. Oh, not your physical body or your mind or your soul, but your spirit does. And it is a world of both good and righteousness and glory and evil. There are all kinds of creatures and beings spiritually here on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. It's a big round, the spirit round. It's all around us. It's in the unseen world of the natural eyes. This word of encouragement that's coming to you today is number 31, 5 of 2022. We are working through the year 2022 so that each week you will have a word of encouragement to help you. Mm -hmm. And this is number five. But it's actually at the same time of recording number 31 of all the words of encouragement videos. So that's why I'm giving you the numbers. This word of encouragement, number 31, five, of 2022 is entitled, Does Your Spirit That Unseen You Worship the God of Salvation? Are you a true worshiper of Him? So it has two titles, yeah. Two questions to ask yourself. So you know Pastor Deborah by now. So to begin, as we always do, let's begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you have brought your word to us in many ways, yet we cannot see it or hear it, but help to speak to us today here on this word of encouragement. We need to hear your voice your words of spirit and life, and only you can do that for us. Only you can open death's spiritual ears, unblind spiritual eyes, and help the spiritual mind to come out of the gross waxness, the covering of the soul, so that it can understand your words. Father, help them to perceive you as you are speaking to them through your words coming through, Pastor Deborah. Father, this is your work. This is your harvest and your fields. The people that will be watching this are your people, 
the family you've always wanted so that they may inherit the everlasting covenant that you contracted with your child called man. Father, help us to peer into the realm of the spirit and see what we cannot see and understand what we cannot understand with our natural eyes, our natural mind, or even our biological body. And we thank you for the help through your Holy Spirit and the word that was made flesh that is filled with spirit and life, deliverance and healing. We thank you. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. This video of words of encouragement, number five of 2022, comes from the scriptures of the authorized King James Version of the Bible. By now, you should know that's the one Pastor Deborah uses. You don't have to have it a written Bible, and many of them are being destroyed and burned in many nations. It's online. It's on social media. It's on YouTube. There's video movies, word for word out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You can get it. And if you cannot and do not have social media, God will talk to you through nature. He will show you his word in nature. But you'll have to be looking with your spiritual eyes to see and hear him talking to you. Let me tell you a quick story about a lady I was trying to help. We would talk about many different things, flesh versus spirit. And when I asked her when she looked at a rose, what did she say? She said, well, if it's the color pink, I see a pink rose. I see a beautiful, soft, blooming pink rose. I said, that's wonderful. I said, when I look at that same rose, do you know what I see? She goes, no, I see him, the creator behind the rose. I see his intricacies of creation and life. I can smell his fragrance in the rose. And do you know what I told her? That rose is speaking to me from him. He is showing me himself. Through the rose. That's right. It's a flesh being, a creature, a plant that he created. He designed it the colors, the petals, the thorns, even the butterflies and the bees that feed on it. So I told her, I see all that. But all she ever saw but she only looked with her natural eyes and saw a beautiful pink rose. That's how it is with most of us. You are just flesh creatures that see nature just as nature. You don't listen for the rose to be singing to you, talking to you, expressing the heart of the Father, his tenderness, his beauty his imagination, his creation. And you don't see the rose as something from him that is being expressed out in the natural world. Because he can't quite tell you all these things because most people aren't looking. They're not seeking him. She wasn't. She had lived all of her life connected deeply to her physical body which had disabilities from birth. Oh, she believed in Jesus, but she never applied it to anything in her life. She never used the strength of God to help her in any way. Even though she worked and had Bible studies at work, she couldn't make the leap into the spirit. Her family and her were all flesh creatures. Oh, she'll be in heaven upon her earthly death, but she will just be a baby who will need lots of teaching 
And there'll be people to help her, that's for sure. How I tried to help her was I would take a movie over to her and I would go slow through the movie and stop it. And I would show her God speaking and symbolizing. And I would show her God speaking through the video, the movie, spiritual truths that she could find in the Bible. But her problem was she just only wanted to be entertained. She didn't want to look at movies as teaching vessels. God using them to talk to her about his word himself, herself. So she only became entertained and thought it was a good story. When I started showing her, she was shocked. And we're told this parable about people. The word is thrown out there from many different ways. But there is an enemy that's waiting to steal that from our minds and our eyes. So we don't only see entertainment. We don't look. We're not seeking. We're not searching behind the movies and the words. For him, he's not even on our agenda. We just want to feel good in our soul. Be happy. Feel loved. Mm -hmm. That's all. Even though we like to venture out into many different realms through the movies, it's only entertainment. So I had a hard time with her. I had to stop being around her because flesh irritates spirit. God had to do that with humanity and many of us, even now. If you're just a flesh creature, you're not looking for him, not seeking him. The ground of your spirit. It's not wanting it. Your soul of your mind will not let it pass, will not even look or help you to see beyond the natural. Just a flesh creature. She would get so lonely, she would go pay her bills in person because she had no friends. Even as she went to church, she didn't make friends. She didn't join the Bible studies, didn't get on the prayer teams. There was a great revival going on here in Pensacola years and years ago. She told me she went once with her sister because she never really goes anywhere alone. And she would stand in line and she had disability problems, so it became painful. So they left, never went in. And I asked her, did you ever go back when the lines went down? No. It was on television, on the radio, in the newspaper. She never pursued it. Mm -mm. Many of us are like that. And this video, this word of encouragement is to help you see and ask yourself a question. Does your spirit, if you even believe and know you have one, does it worship the God of salvation? Are you a true worshiper? That also are some powerful questions. Well, what God is the God of salvation? What does salvation mean? What does it mean in the word worship mean? What part of you is to worship your physical body by bowing, getting on your knees six times a day, washing your arms and hands, bowing at a wall, raising your hands, dancing? Is that what it means? Going to a faith or a religious service many times a day. Is that what it means? What does worship mean? Who is the God of salvation? Are you just worshiping somebody that has lots of wisdom? Maybe it was a human being. Is what you're worshiping a God? And if it is, does he save you? Save you from what? Save you to what? Is he the one true God of the kingdom of heaven who had a son named Christ Jesus who came to earth in the flesh, taught among us for about three years, and then went to a cross because he claimed to be the king of the kingdom of heaven. 
But then he didn't stay dead. He rose up again three days. And he is risen now in his glorified earthly body. Oh, he pops in to earth all the time. He's always working and busy. Is that the God of salvation that you're to be worshiping? What part of you is to worship? Your mind? Your soul? Your emotions? Your physical body? Your spirit? What part of you is to worship this God of John out of the Gospels of the King James Bible? John was one of the first apostles of this Christ Jesus. Precious young man. He wrote other books later on. And he is saying, and he's asking you, does your spirit, first you got to believe you got a spirit, does it worship this God of salvation? And are you a true worshiper of him? That's right. Deep questions. A teacher is here to help you explore yourself. Help you to see and learn things you may not know yet. Transfer information and knowledge to you that they have. Help you to expand your horizons and, and maybe change concepts, ideas, and principles from one form to another. Well, let's get into the scriptures. John 4, 23. These are the red words of Christ Jesus speaking when he was alive and not yet glorified. He says, but the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. Christ Jesus was at a well in Samaria, talking to a Samaritan woman who had come there to draw water. He was thirsty and he asked for some, and they got into a conversation. Now, the Jews typically did not talk to, intermingle with, drink from the same cups or eat from the same bowls as the Samaritans. You might have called the Jews racist back then. Uh -huh. Not quite sure how all that developed yet. Hadn't studied that. But that was the case. So she was shocked at this Jew who she knew was by his robe that he had. And he began talking to her about her relationship with God. Because you have to be ready to talk to one person to many, any place, at any time. So he said, oh, if you knew the gift of the water that I have to give you, you would ask me instead for a drink. And the water that I would give you would be a well that rose up and was ever flowing. And she sat down and started talking, said, you know, we heard that some guy was coming and we've been going up to this high mountain to worship this God. And he said, honey, you aren't going to have to go up to that mountain anymore or go to the temple in Jerusalem to worship this God. And you don't really know who this God is. Now, how she started believing and wanted to listen to him was he moved in some gifts of the spirit. Words of knowledge, discerning of spirits. He asked her a question about her husband, and she answered truthfully. She said, the man I'm living with now is not my husband. He said, you're right. That's always a good place to start is with the truth. He's not. And so words of knowledge give. He came out and said, oh, he's your fifth person you live with you're not married to so now she could see that he knew a lot about her new truths now she would engage with him sometimes you need the gifts of the spirit to be at work i can tell you how that works 
uh, years ago on that revival called the Brownsville Revival, I was on the deliverance team. We worked with witches and people who had demonic problems, suicidal, all kinds of issues. So when a prayer team person came to me and said, I am ministering to a young girl. She says she's a witch and she's in Satanism. And they couldn't talk to her according to the rules, so they called me. As I was going down the steps of the platform, I got a word of knowledge. And as I arrived to meet with her, I said, you are a multi-generational Satanist. And your satanic assignment was to come here to the revival, find a certain person, have sex with them, create a baby, and kill the baby. Because it would have been a baby of the revival. And it would have been a symbolic symbol of Satan killing the revival. And she said to me, how do you know that? You're not a witch. I said, God just told me. I had to learn how to be ready to move in the gifts of the spirit at all times. Now I'm having to learn how to hear the interpretation of dreams from people. They get a dream. They don't know what it means. That's a gift. You can't teach it. All you can do is have your spirit ready to receive the interpretation. Only God can interpret dreams. Even a demonic dream that Satan gives you. So this Jesus at the well with this woman, this Samaritan woman, began moving in the gifts. Now she's ready to listen. She's interested. So he starts talking to her about who she's worshiping. And she says, well, we're told to go to the mountain. That's what our ancestors did. But you guys, you Jews, said we got to go to the temple, a building. Which place is right? And he is saying, the hour's coming, honey. He didn't quite say that. But the true worshipers, they're going to worship this God as father. That was a new way of worshiping him. He was not only their God, but they were his children. They were to be in a relationship spiritually as a child and a father. That was new. They didn't believe this God that they had been worshiping had children. And he says that you must worship in spirit and that the Father is seeking your spirit to worship him. Does your God seek your spirit or is he only satisfied with your physical body worshiping him and what your physical body does? Mm -hmm. So he goes on and says to her in verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's telling her, your spirit must worship him. Not your physical body. Not at a tree. Not in a building, but in spirit. And you must worship in truth. It means you must have understanding and knowledge of who he is, what part of you is to be worshiping him, and that he is your father. These were tremendous truths that this lady at the well had never heard. And many of you, the God that you worship, you're not his child. Many of them say, I don't have any children. So worship my prophet or my teacher. Or the pastor. Worship them. Because they're closer to me. Than you are. But the Greeks showed us. Even the Egyptians showed us. That God. Of the Jews. Had children. Olympus and Greek gods. They all came down. Had spirit sex. Produced a human. That claimed to be the God. The son of a God. Even Julius Caesar said he was the child of a God. Therefore, he should be the supreme ruler. Hercules. Mm -hmm. Achilles. Mm -hmm. 
many, many of our heroes that we read about in Greek mythology, they were children of the gods of, of Greece. Mm -hmm. The gods would come down from Mount Olympus, trying to help humanity in a way through a person to solve problems. The Egyptians believed that the pharaoh was the son of the living God, and he was to protect the nation. Many, many. You go watch the movie 300. You know, here King Darius said he is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. That means I am a God. You watch that movie and you'll see how a human being dipped into a pool in a cave came out a God. The old him had died and some new thing came out that was going to rule Persia against the Greeks. Gods have been in battle against each other since the beginning. The Egyptians showed us that there were demons in the afterlife, that there was an afterlife, and your heart would be judged against a feather. Mm -hmm. But humanity forgot about that. That all became superstitious ancient history. And the gods became just our ancestors, mm -hmm. forces, energies. Mm -hmm. Because the age of reasoning and medicine and science had come in and overtook spiritual things. But here at the well, Christ Jesus was telling her, it is your spirit. That is what must worship this God because he is a spirit. And he is looking for your spirit to worship it. So Pastor Deborah had to learn all about spirits, good and evil and human. I had to see why a spirit couldn't worship this God of salvation. Why didn't it know the truth that it was its father? What were the reasons that this knowledge was kept from them? And I had to study this God who was a spirit. And what did it mean to worship him in spirit? And what did it mean that he was the God of salvation? I had to do so much studying just to understand these two scriptures. So I ask you, are you a true worshiper in spirit and in truth of King of John's God? Christ Jesus. When you worship whatever you worship, maybe it's the God of democracy. Maybe it's the God of communism, socialism. Maybe you go to their temples, mm -hmm. the houses of worship, the place where all the sacrifices are provided, mm -hmm. where money is brought in, where you have your temple guards. Mm -hmm. Your enforcers. Maybe you just worship money. Maybe you worship pleasure in any form. Maybe you worship having property because you don't seem to feel valuable and you can't seem to get it by working. Everybody's seeking a better life one way or the other. And they will use any God, any method that they can. But the word of encouragement to you is to look and ask yourself. You know your spirit is there, I hope. King David used to have family meetings inside of him and say, Oh, my soul, why are you so discouraged today? Why are you so downcast and depressed? The spirit must rise up. But if you can't, it's because you're still stuck, married, bonded to your soul. You're covered in a wax grossness of flesh and the lust of the eyes. And your soul's desires spreads to your spirit. But you can come out of that condition through a Hebrews 4.12. Mm -hmm. Then God can begin working on your spirit. And we learn about that in Isaiah 61 and 62. 
then once you start get some healing and you start seeing better and hearing and understanding from your healing and deliverance from your soul and any demonic spirits of the bewitchment, lies, and deceptions that are there have been cast out of your spirit, then your spirit can begin to know the truth about yourself as a spirit, about this God of salvation as a spirit. What is he trying to save? The spirit. What does he want to worship him? The spirit. What does he want the spirit to know? The truth about himself as a God of salvation and about you as his child. So be encouraged. There is hope for you much to learn, much freedom to be had, deliverance work to be done, healing to happen, getting divorced from your soul through a spiritual circumcision. Lots of learning to be done, and he is here to help you, even today. And that's your word of encouragement. Ask yourself these questions, and then ask him to help you to know the truth. Oh, you don't have to believe in him, because he knows you don't right now. But he will help you. I just had a precious young man. He didn't even know how to talk to him. He got saved on LinkedIn, born again. I had to teach him how to talk to this God that this Jesus at the well with the Samaritan was talking about. It's like you come out of the womb and you don't know how to talk. You don't know who's who. You see people's eyes. You hear their voice. But you don't know what is a mama or a papa. You don't know. And over time, when they keep talking to you, you keep looking in their eyes. They hear your voice. The brain is developing. The soul is learning. Mm -hmm. And that's the same in the spirit. You got to grow up. First, you got to get born. Got to come out of the womb of darkness and ignorance. The spirit has to be birthed out of the soul and the mind. Mm -hmm. Come out into the light. So be encouraged. We want to help you. And if you would like that help today, it is here for you. Because God is wanting you to worship him in spirit and in truth. As the God of your salvation, as the God that Christ Jesus was telling this woman at the well about, he wants you to worship him as a spirit, in the spirit, and with knowledge of him. That he is your father and you are his child. Mm -hmm. Wonderful good news for you. So be encouraged. There's lots to do yet. And today is a good day to start. All right. That ends this word of encouragement for you. Father, your word has gone forth. Your truth of yourself and them. Take them and plant them deep in the spirit. Help them to come out with a Hebrews 4.12. Birth them out of the darkness of the womb of the soul. Bring them forth into the light. Begin your Isaiah 61 and 62 in their lives. Help them to see that maybe the gods that they are worshiping are not you. And they are not worshiping in spirit and in truth. And if they are worshiping in spirit, that they may be worshiping Satan, the God of this world, maybe through ignorance or through generational ties, and they had no choice. Help them to be free of that. And you know who they are, Father. Reach down into humanity in every nation, every culture, every family, no matter where you find a human, even in the womb, in childhood, in streets, it does prison system, refugee camps. Father, be about your work. Go into your fields and find the little ones that you are looking for. 
In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, I'll see you again next week in another word of encouragement. Bye.